Hello, good morning. How are you guys doing? I woke, I, I chuckled myself awake this morning, which is really bizarre. I can't remember the last time that's ever happened. It was a really funny dream. It wasn't a funny dream, particularly, but all my friends were there, and we were working on a mural, and <laughs> there was a queen in the corner, a, you know, like a gay boy, and um, he was trying to tell the artist to please paint a queen. He wanted to see himself on that wall. How cool is that? And then me and my friends were, like, messing around and cracking jokes, and it made me laugh so hard that I woke up. I don't really remember what it was about, but I'm just feeling very happy today, this morning. Although, like, happy is a good word for it, but also, like, um, there's still just, like, a lot of intense emotions. Um, and I know that a lot of people have been feeling similarly, especially since the eclipse back in November. We are in a portal. We are in a tunnel. This The threshold is coming, and then... Once we're out on the other side, likely in the new year, I don't know, mid-January, end of January. Or whenever it happens for you, honestly, because time is irrelevant. Everything will be different on the other side. So think about that for a minute. How are you preparing yourself for the new year? And I don't just mean your resolutions and your... You know, your business plans, your your career goals, your money goals. But, like, how are you... How are you seeing yourself differently as, you know, through this portal? Because I like to think of the portal as, like, coming out of the other side and um, we're sort of in a different place. And if we are products of our environment, like, you know, we can change. We can We can affect great change by changing simply who we are. You don't have to go be looking very far if we want to create change. It starts with the individual. Look at that Queen of Pentacles underneath. She's living the manifestation. This is this is what like the other side of the portal should look like. Other side of, you know, the threshold. Choosing to nurture the things we value most, right? That's Venus retrograde message. Turning toward abundance. The rabbit's here. It's going to happen very quickly. The rabbit is just like haste. How quickly can you get yourself to this place of um, feeling like you already have what it takes? If you can do that, you're already there. Like you've already made it. Look at that Capricorn right there. Capricorn season. Capricorn. I've already had somebody pull out receipts on me. <laughs> I'm like, you can't be serious. Also, expected. Me, I'm just collecting receipts. Because I've always been very um, financially oriented. Just like, I have good financial organizational skills. Not necessarily, not just financial, just like, you know numbers I like to keep track using numbers like progress um, what am I trying to do here even let's go to uh, let's go to this one the messages I've been getting recently are um, have been a lot of like let this cycle play out like if this if you feel like you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing right now and, and through the end of the year, it is a time to just get grounded. Um, it's sort of like for me oscillating between doing healing work for yourself and then grounding yourself in that, like heal and grounding, healing and grounding. So you're sort of, this is the process of gently uprooting all of these old things until you can feel sort of stable and secure seeing yourself differently or feeling differently about a situation, your place in the world, or otherwise. 
But it's about just going inward and doing that healing work. So there's nothing left to do but rest. Not a lazy rest, but like take care of your mind, body, soul, and um, and see what your subconscious is trying to tell you right now. You can tune in. Thinker. Thinker. 44. I believe this is a Sagittarius card. Oh, remember I was talking about the portal? Sorry, not the portal. The, the eclipse. That was in Sag time. Chaos and conflict. Thirty-three. So I got forty-four, thirty-three, eighteen. Okay, because like serendipity, but like that was serendipity right there. Um, eighteen uh, reduces to nine. Nine is a trans. Eight transformation. Nine is. Um, I mean, that's like the cycle is um, coming to a close or something here. Serendipity is about feeling lucky. Hmm. It's almost like someone here is choosing. Someone is really, how do I say this? Overcoming. Hmm. When faced with chaos and conflict, our minds can sort of go towards why is this happening to me to, um, you know, sort of like fatalist, <laughs> oscillate between fatalist and, and also, what am I trying to say? Um, just choosing to see the negative things without seeing the good things that are happening around us, chaos and conflict. These are, if you feel like there's chaos and conflict in your life, it is for some reason. It's because things which no longer are serving us are falling away. And this is what I mean about this is really a blessing in disguise. You And I, what I see is somebody is thinking their way through this situation. Or these are old habits, old, old cognitive habits that are now being disillusioned. There's, there's, um, see how he's like, the giraffe, the zebra was wearing giraffe's clothes. Hmm. I'll read some of those cards later. Let's just keep going and see what happens. Thinker, chaos and conflict, serendipity. It's almost like think your serendipity. It's like it is the message of like what you think you create. Your your words are your wand or something like our minds are powerful manifestors and it we are thinking we have the ability to overthink and create our own chaos and conflict. And the you know what the universe does in response? Okay, you're expecting the worst. The worst will happen. But if you allow, if it just requires just a little bit of allowing and honestly just, just some contemplation around this feeling, what you feel is chaotic in your life or what feels like conflict, that is... That is your subconscious trying to say something here. This is about the self. This is about identity. Serendipity, it might be... Well, for a second I thought it looked like serendipity was in quotes. Hmm. I think this is about huh, thinking. <laughs> this is about thinking. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. This reminds me of, of a message that came out last night. I was doing a personal read. 
about the blue moon comes once in a blue moon. Someone's thinking about um, making a choice. Unsure if it will cause chaos and conflict. Because <laughs> that might... Chaos and conflict has, has a way of making us... I said this already. Get in our minds about something. Oh, we don't want to... We don't want to overcomplicate something. But then again, like if this is a lucky chance and this is your chance to go at it, go for it, then this is the time. This is the time. And we have also Five of Wands underneath while I was saying that. Five of Wands is conflict. <laughs> it's also just, you know, um, could be adventure. It could be words are your wands. Wands are your... Words are your... I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm feeling confused. Okay. Five of Cups underneath. Yeah. Okay, so... This is about maybe somebody getting in their head about something. Some sort of negative cognitive uh, cycle or pattern is getting blown up. It's getting, yes, okay. It's getting blown up because there's the high priestess intuition, wisdom, higher wisdom is coming in and you're choosing to say yes. Look at that. Like the Ten of Wands had come up in a few of the previous readings and now we have the Ace of Swords. The biggest yes in the, biggest yes in the tarot. Someone is saying yes and choosing to listen to this voice. They're, they're subconscious. If spirit is trying to tell you something, it has spoken and you have listened. Yeah, what's next? Confusion. Oh, no. <laughs> the page of wands again. <laughs> why are you here? Just kidding. I know why you're here. This is like a very um, a massive transformational time for a lot of folks. If you, if this is resonating for you and you are receiving the message, whatever it is for you, it's time, you may feel like it's time to go. Like it's time, like let's get started. But what do we do? What do I do? And can I even do it? Do I have the resources to do it? Am I able to pull this off? All you need to know right now is that Page of Wands. Page of Wands is about potential, the seed of inspiration, the need to, yes, look out into what is possible, but to ground your, your ideas in, in reality. That's why her staff is on the ground. If you want to heed the Page of Wands, you ground your potential in reality. What was that, like, saying? Oh, something, I think, don't quote me. Uh, manifestation is, like, 75% fantasy and 25% reality. If we're just manifesting the same, like, if we're just manifesting mostly reality in our lives then nothing really ever changes. And what I see here is this desire for change, for moving on from, from thinking, overthinking too much about this chaos and conflict that's around. But there is a reason for it. It's, there, there's some kind of serendipitous activity here. You know, towers happen, destructive cycles repeat themselves until you finally get the message. Someone here does need to turn around um, their emotions. Like if, if the overall transformation might, you know, it's linked to our minds, how we're thinking. I think you know, the knives are, swords are, the nervous system as well, our intellect. But it's how our minds sometimes control our hearts into thinking where we, we should feel disappointed in a situation or about ourselves. For what has happened. 
And that's really, that's truly not the case. I don't think any God or spirit would ever want that for anybody. At the same time, we have to acknowledge that things do happen for a reason. I like to say everything is unfolding exactly as it should. And unfortunately, we are three-dimensional beings in human bodies living in this purgatory of a world. <laughs> no. It's, I'm sorry, but it's true. At the same time, the world is so beautiful and worth protecting. I think I'll leave it there. I don't know. Do you guys want any clarification? Um, if I had, if I had somebody, you know, maybe I, I could, if I had more people, if I had a proper channel, um, and I will make a channel, I think once I can name it something, um, if you have any recommendations for a name, what to name a, a, a little tarot channel, um, because then once I made a channel, once I make a channel, I could, um, go do things like go live and stuff. I mean, I could do that anyway, but I just don't have an audience online yet. So this will find you whenever it finds you, I suppose. Oh, you know, let's read from the book real quick. I just want, let's see if, what, what other messages come out. We have 44. Uh, thinker, strategy, being analytical, logical. The ability to reason and strategize is the focus now. Take things at face value and follow the logical path. Your calculations will prove to be correct, for in this moment there is no deeper meaning than what is obvious. <laughs> I love that. And see, today we don't have any clarifications of the cards. It's obvious what's here on the table. Excuse me. Things are exactly as they seem. You have all the information you need. Keep it simple and you will win the game of life you're playing right now. Yeah, chaos and conflict could be like how our minds overcomplicate things sometimes too. And the prosperity message is calculated action is called for now. It's important to sit down and plan a strategy. Focus on the steps you're going to take to claim your prosperous life. List out lists are your friend now. So get out your journal. Write down what you're doing. What you're going to do today to signal to the universe that you're serious about attracting abundance. Your plans and strategies will yield wondrous results. Remember your most effective strategic partner is spirit. You will win this game and your triumph will be for the highest good of all. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, because I see this here, five of cups, five of pentacles, two fives. There might be, so this line right here, where'd it go? Write down what you're going to do today to signal to the universe that you're serious about attracting abundance. If you're serious about attracting abundance and facilitating change, we have to work on these fives here. We have to work through the fives. We have to work through the cognitive dissonance. And it may seem unfair because life is unfair <laughs> to, you know, this reminds me of almost like, like toxic positivity no one's asking you to be like that. No one's asking you to be like that. And no one is saying to ignore the, the, the challenges of existing. But it, it is your job to work through that. Like those, these are signals to, to tap into subcon to your subconscious, to tap into, you know, to tap in. The universe is saying, come to the table you're needed so similarly you can signal to the universe I feel like this is the three of wands energy you can signal to the universe by saying I'm ready <laughs> 
And if you're not ready, say, I got to heal myself or I got to, if for whatever you're not, you're not ready, you don't feel ready, you're in a, a low spot this season, I hear you and I validate that because the holidays are so, are so full of this toxic positivity, aren't they? It's sort of, um, uh, feels, I mean, I was going to say whitewashed, but absolutely. <laughs> and it also feels, yeah, sort of like, um, the holidays can be sort of like gaslighty. Everyone's all fucking cheery. And that's fine. Like, enjoy yourself. Like, live your life. But if you feel disappointed in some aspect of what you're experiencing right now, like, dig a little deeper into what that is. Because the point here is to come out of confusion and start seeing things from a place of abundance and potential instead of scarcity. Thirty-three. Chaos and conflict, disarray, being at a cross purpose with another, the tension of opposites, the value of chaos before order. Opposing forces come together to create a turbulent atmosphere, but consider the value of chaos that serves you well as you become unmoored by it. Scattered to the winds, you leave behind the parts of yourself that no longer need, you no longer need, and disperse seeds to reinvent yourself anew. Although the conflict appears to exist externally, its essence is also internal projected outward and causing disarray. You may find yourself at a cross-purpose with someone else, facing a storm you feel you can't control. Yet every storm passes and chaos leads to reordering of things. Conflict provides a way to see more than just one side of a situation. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Look upon this as just a moment in time when you may need to take shelter and step away from the fray. Don't be too eager to fight. This is a time to understand rather to be understood. Circumstances appear to be chaotic, but everything that is happening now is in truth shaking things up so you can find the real path to your prosperity. Yes, it's a stormy time and it feels as if there are opposing forces wherever you turn. Be reassured that there is divine purpose in this chaos. Everything that doesn't work is being taken from you, so the purest, sorry, truest parts of yourself remain. The events occurring now are essential for your ultimate prosperity. This chaos is divinely inspired, even though it doesn't appear that way now. In time, you will know this to be true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Serendipity. Opportunity allied with readiness. The awareness of synchronicity. Luck and good fortune appearing as signs and symbols. A magic alignment of events. Yes. You've stepped into alignment with the greater good, where your dreams and the collective dream resonate in exquisite harmony. Now is the time for luck and preparation to meet and create miracles that you could never have planned all by yourself. Keep in mind that you are a channel for providence right now as a higher energy uses you as a force on behalf of the whole world. Your fortunes become everyone's fortune. Everything you bring in to bring now will leave a wondrous legacy for others in the future. Your service to the world is being supported at this time. Expect the unexpected and smile, for spirit loves you so much. You are in the right place at the right time. Be grateful for the stars are aligned in your favor and fortune is smiling on you. Victory and success are yours. The choices you have made in the past have prepared you for the opportunities now before you. This is your lucky moment. The timing is perfect. And with that, I will leave you with a message from a friend of mine on Instagram. My goodness. I'll just look it up. There's, there's, I'm not trying to pretend like I remember everything.
Okay, quick shout out to Anna Crystal. She's a hypnotherapist, alternative and holistic health service person. Um, this quote. In case it's helpful, I want to let you know that you are perfectly on time to your life, regardless of where others are at or your own judgment around where you're at. You cannot mess up your unique journey and you are right on time. Love it. All right, guys, have a good day. Enjoy your holiday. Z. Good luck <laughs> through the portal. And I'll see you on the other side.